Okay, guys, we're on the second video. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to get through everything that's remaining on this part. We might not. There's a few tricky things that you haven't even seen yet that we have to cover. So far, we've got, what do we got so far? We've got 1 over linear, a linear over linear, which is uh, ends up giving us our standard uh, type of rational expression graph. And then we have the 1 over the quadratic, which gave us this slightly strange looking one well where if you remember it's very tight to the asymptotes and it's on both sides of, of the horizontal asymptote and then we have a uh, quadratic over linear and we're halfway through that we're now at the situation number two where we have no common factors and what you'll notice is that if i um, take this equation and the example here x squared plus 2x minus 8 divided by x minus 3 if I had to factor that top part out, I'm going to end up with an x plus 4 and an x minus 2. And divide the whole thing by x minus 3. So nothing's going to cancel out in this situation, but um, I can still figure out quite a few things. I, I do know that because of the denominator being x minus 3, that x cannot equal 3. And therefore, this is giving me my vertical asymptote. And I've already drawn it in on the graph there. We, we don't, no problems there. We, we know exactly what we're doing. But the question is, what do you do for the other asymptote? We don't have any easy way of getting our horizontal asymptote in this case. In fact, there is no horizontal asymptote in the situation where you have a quadratic over linear with no common factors. We actually have a slanted, therefore we have a slant asymptote, a slanted asymptote. And how do we get that? Spelled asymptote wrong. Of course I did. It's one of those words. What are you going to do? Asymptote. So the way you do it is you have to divide one into the other. There's no other way around it. So and because by doing that, what I'm going to find out is what is the equation, the equation of the asymptote. Because the equation is going to end up being um, a line. So let's let's just do it. Why don't we just do it? Why not? Can't hurt. So I got x minus three. I'm going to be putting up here a x. That'll give me my x squared minus three x. That will end up being let me see two minus three two minus minus three. Give me five x minus eight. So it'll be x plus five. And I could keep going here. I could say, okay, I got the 5x, and that gives me a negative 15, and I worry about the remainder. That'll be a plus 7. But I don't really care because the remainder is not important. What's important is that I got the equation because now I can actually spot this somewhere. This will be at x plus 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I know that's my y-intercept. It's a typical linear equation, and the slope is 1. So I'm going to have something that kind of does that. So with that in mind, I now know where I'm going to find my equation. Now, in this case, I'm just going to sketch it. I'm not doing anything beyond that. Um, you would probably have to pick a few points. Now, because you know this, you would probably want to say, well, Let's see where um, the graph lies at x equals, say, 2 or 1, or uh, perhaps at 4 or 5. And then you could probably get a better idea. And I would expect you to do that in a test. We don't have as much time now. But we do know that since it's a positive over positive, that we're going to still have the thing located in the upper right and lower left quadrants. So it is going to look like something like that. Now, I haven't been exact about it, but like I said, a few table of values, the, you know, one, maybe one to four points, and I would say four points, and you're probably in a good position to really claim where it is located. I don't think you need to do any more than that. So now we got quad over linear done. And the question is, what if we have quad over quad? So I'll write that over there. And now we're going to do quad over, our list is now getting bigger. Quad over quad. And quad, quadratic over quadratic. Whoa, that's not good. I see Mr. Gale spelling things badly. That's not... No, I'm sure you guys see me make tons of mistakes. Probably no big deal at this point. Okay, so once again, similar to the quadratic divided by linear, we're going to have two situations. 
one in which there is, as you guessed, common factors, and one in which there isn't. So let's look at the first one. Um, situation one. Common factors. So let's see what this looks like. Let's take an equation. Let's say y equals 2x squared plus 7 plus 3 divided by 2x squared plus 5. Oh, that shouldn't be 7x. 7x plus 5x plus 2. Now, if I had to go through all this, I would say, okay, I've got a, I can get a 2x plus 5 out of this thing. I probably want to make it because that would look like down there. So if I had to uh, see where did that 2x, what do we got there, plus, hold on, let me think about that. Okay, so the trick with these guys is that I have this have something add up to 7, that is equal to, multiply together will give me 6, so 7x, that would be 6 and 1, so if I had to piece that together, I'm saying 6x plus x plus 3. And what about the bottom one? I'm probably looking at the same thing. What add together will give me 5, but also um, multiply together will give me 4. Well, Hi there. Oh, it's Mr. Cooper. Hang on now. Okay, sorry guys, just talking to Mr. Cooper there. Looks like it might be going on a hike. Okay, so just get back to what I'm talking about here. Uh, 5x, got to be... Uh, Adding up to 5, but it's got to be multiplied to give you 4. So that seems kind of obvious. I'll have a 4x uh, plus an, uh, 1x plus a 2. So these things will all end up getting uh, multiplied out uh, and give me some good factors. I'm going to end up with, uh, well, um, 2 outside of, um, actually, sorry, that's not 2 outside. It was 2x outside of 2x outside of x plus 3 plus x plus 3, and on the bottom I'm going to have a 2x, and that's a squared up there, 2x outside of x plus 2, plus x plus 2. So I'm going to end up with an equation that looks like 2x plus 1, there's my common factor, times x plus 3, all over 2x plus 1, x plus 2. So now I've got my equation. So what can I do with that? Well, I've got to look at a few things. Uh, this is my common factor. So this will cancel out. And once I do that, I'm going to end up with something that's going to look very similar. That is my original linear over linear. So I should be able to make an equation out of that. But what did the 2x plus 1 mean? So um, I'm going to skip ahead for a moment. Hang on one second. And boom, I just did all that work there. So the x plus 3 over x plus 2 ends up becoming an equation of 1 over x plus 2 plus 1. So what I can see there is that my um, 1 over x plus 2 is going to give me uh, an asymptote. So there I can say that x cannot equal negative 2. So I'm going to have that. I can see that there also is a no k value. So therefore my horizontal asymptote is right on the zero line. So everything seems to be going exactly as I would have expected with a normal uh, graph. Hold on, I'm sorry, I totally lied. It completely is an asymptote. That's that one there. I hope you caught it instead of me. Okay, so I got a one there. So what happens to the graph? Well, um, it's multiplying by 1. I know I'm going to have something that kind of looks like this. And on the other side as well. Um, I'm not, I have no uh, expansion or, or compression, so I know it's going through my 1 comma 1 areas. But is there anything else special about it? Well, there is. That's where the 2x plus 1 comes in. Because this can't be equal to 0 as well. So the 2x plus 1 cannot be equal to 0. Therefore, x cannot be equal to negative one half. So what does that mean here? Well, at x equals negative one half, that's right there, I need to have a, situ a, a spot where this graph, well, just can't exist. So I will have on my graph 
in, the, in this particular case, a point of discontinuity. It will look almost exactly like a linear over linear, but in this case it will have one spot missing. And that's the main thing that's special about that. So we still have to very quickly deal with the second situation. That's when a quad over quad has no comp. So situation two for quad over quad, where we have no common fact, no common factors. Now, what does this look like? What happens here? Now, this is uh, where it gets a little, a little fun. So we're going to have an example y equals. Uh, x squared plus 4x minus 5 all over x squared minus x minus 2. And you can do the work yourself if you wish. I'm going to zip on through and give you the factors right now. i got an x plus 5 and an x minus 1 all divided by an x plus 1 and an x minus 2. Now in this case, nothing's common. And I need to know how I can get some of my asymptotes and everything. And, uh, well, let's take a look. For instance, I do know that I can't have the bottom equal to 0. Therefore, both of these cannot equal 0. x cannot equal negative 1. And in this case, x cannot equal 2. So what is this telling me? It's actually telling me that in this case, I have two, two vertical asymptotes. So at x equals negative 1, like so and x equals 2. Now what's not so apparent is where is my horizontal asymptote in this case. Now what in case uh, what we have to do in this case is is basically see what will happen as x gets steadily very very big or um, in either the positive or negative x direction. What happens is everything gets really large and if we looked at the original equation we'd notice that well the x squareds will dominate. At a certain point, um, a thousand squared is way bigger than uh, a thousand, and a million squared is so much bigger than a million, it keeps getting astronomically bigger than the other terms. So eventually, as, as x gets big, we are left with x squared over x squared. The, the large terms will dominate. In other words, it will end up being infinity over infinity. It's almost like saying that. And although I can't really look at that, what is it getting close to? What is the, what is the limit? It's getting closer and closer to y equals 1. And with that, we know what our horizontal asymptote is going to look like. Now, after that, you're going to have to get, um, if, you, if you're required to do this on any level of uh, accuracy, and figure out what this is all going to look like, um, you're going to have to get a few points. You're going to have to do a little table of values. But, so, for example, it would be good to know what, for example, where um, for x equals 0 and 1, that would probably be a good idea. So um, y equals, for example, for 0, I'd be getting 5, negative 1, over 1, and negative 2. So interestingly enough, I'm going to end up with a positive 5 over 2. So at x equals 0, I'm going to end up with 2.5 right there. Now it's, it's important that I know which way it's going to end up. Because if I don't do that, I may end up drawing it on the wrong side. It is not automatically going to show up on one side or the other. So what about y um, at um, x equals 0? one. Well, in that case, I'm going to have uh, six. I'm going to have zero. Okay, well, that pretty well nails it. Do I have any non-zero? Okay, they're both non-zero, and it doesn't really matter. I'm going, I can stop right now. I know I'm going to be equal to zero. So this looks a little odd. What does this actually look like? What is happening here is probably something you may want to know. So what I do know so I'm going to end up with this happening on either side. This is definitely happening. Um, there is no overall negative value or anything like that. It's always going to be positive on the positive side of the asymptote. But what